Let's begin with a demo. Let's search for Apple versus Quest 2. It's going to default to perplexity search and it's going to use this search term, it auto generates search terms. And now we're getting an answer from perplexity. When we have received our answer, we have written it into a text file and the entities are being extracted in parallel and a thread will get received that in a second. We can ask it to use a different search term if you're struggling with coming up with search terms. And now it's going to ask for a futures comparison. And we have received the extracted entities from the parallel process and it's written to a JSON file. We can also instruct it to use EXA, which was metaphor previously. And we are asking for specs and price comparison using EXA. These are the URLs that we are using. And these URLs, the contents of these URLs are being saved to our text files and entities are being extracted, but we also get a summarized response. And we have received uh, final JSON entities from the last search. We can instruct it by just by typing combine to combine the entities. So all the JSON entities are combined, but this is a programmatic approach. We can also ask it to combine it using GPT. All I have to do is say yes here. And all of these uh, JSON files is going to be combined and a new combined GPT JSON file is going to be created. This is good because the final research report uh, will drop like, you know, duplicates. And also it's much more concise and better organized. Here we go. We have written it to GPT combined entities.json. As you can see, it's much, much better organized in comparison to the original. So essentially, Ultimate GPT Researcher allows you to research any topic and create, generate entity-based research reports. GPT Researcher uses the unif OpenAI Unify class that I've written, and all the files for this will be available at my Patreon. Link will be in the description. Before reviewing the code, let's take a look at its diagram to see how it's working. When we first initialize the program, it initializes three different GPTs for regular chat and answering our questions. A GPT switchboard, which will decide to use perplexity or exa search. And GPT Entity Extractor, which we're going to run in a parallel thread using a queue system. This program uses three different APIs. One is the OpenAI API, another one is Perplexity's API. You can visit Perplexity's documentation for more information on that. And it uses the API from EXA API, which was formerly known as Metaphor. Perplexity returns us full answers after it performs an internet search using its Perplexity 7 billion online model. And EXA actually returns us search results in a scraped format. From the URLs we have defined, from the URLs that it was able to find. In the beginning, we are asked to save the user input or not, if you want to save those files. And then we take in user input, and then the CP GPT switchboard decides if we're going to use whether perplexity search or exa search based on your query. If the GPT thinks, uh, switchboard thinks, regular chat will suffice, then GPT will just answer you normally. But if you are going to perform search, it will default to perplexity, but you can ask it to use exa search as well. When we receive the results, the search results, then we put them to a queue and GPT Entity Extractor in a parallel thread continuously withdraws from this queue and actually extracts entities and keeps writing them to a file. This is why we can actually continue to chat with it normally while all the file operations are taking place in the background. When we receive the results also, uh, we send it to GPT to get an answer for it. And this is when the regular chat kicks in and we get an answer to our uh, question printed in the terminal in yellow and in purple when we are receiving information from perplexity and then this process repeats you can keep asking it questions and this same process will repeat and all the information will be written to files and you get your answer but at any point in time you can actually enter a command called combine when you ask gpt to combine then we get all these json files and combine them to a single json file then you'll be asked if you want to combine them with gpt if you say yes then we make a request to gpt to combine these into a neatly organized JSON file, as we have done in this case. We have combined our JSON files into a single JSON file and then made a call to GPT to neatly organize it and drop duplicates. If you like my content, you can visit my website at echohive.live where you can find all the videos I've created with their descriptions. You can also perform search. And if you're a patron, you can click on these download code buttons, which will take you to my Patreon, where I have over 200 interesting and fun projects which you can download and immediately run and use. I've spent over 2,000 hours last year and spent roughly 4 to 50 hours a week coding to produce this, these projects. And on average, you can expect to have anywhere from 7 to 15 new projects being published every month. As a patron, you'll have access to them all along with exclusive coding walkthrough videos. And if you're interested in having meetings with me or one-on-one, -on -one, I have an opening at AI Virtues number 3 and AI Prodigy number 2 levels. Take a look at that if that is something you're interested in. Now let's review the code. But before we begin, I do want to mention that this uses the OpenAI Unified that I have written. 
this GPT calls class just pretty much brings in all the necess all the useful API endpoints from OpenAI that I use, and also has uh, methods for adding messages, keeping track of history and clear history, uh, and several other methods, which just makes it more convenient to deal with OpenAI API. It has the async versions of all the methods as well, so you can actually build parallel running programs easily. If you are interested in a more detailed code review for this, please watch this video, OpenAI Unified API. But it essentially just makes calls to GPT. It has a regular methods for making calls. Uh, you can define whether you want to use streaming or JSON mode on or not. It has methods for GPT vision to generate images with DALI, to get embeddings, and to perform similarity search. And the async versions of all these functions are available too. And I have also added access search and perplexity search to it too. So we are importing the GPT calls from that file and we are initializing three different GPTs with it. The first one is going to be a regular GPT, this chat GPT, which we're going to be asking questions of. You can now name the GPTs too with the name parameter. I'm defining a GPT switchboard and GPT entity extractor. As you can see, this GPT switchboard is going to use JSON mode true and stream to set the false. And the entity extractor is using JSON mode true, set the stream set to false. So this just makes it so much easier uh, to define different GPTs in a single program. Then we have a quick, we just create this research folder if it doesn't exist. And we have a search, save search results function, which just saves the text files into their appropriate files and enumerates them uh, with the number representing the number of the search that you're on. Then we define the GPT switchboard with the add message method from OpenAI Unified. And we just give it a system message to return either perplexity or X as a Boolean. If it wants to chat with us normally, it will return both of these faults. And depending on whether perplexity or X has been returned true, we can perform the appropriate search. And then we have the entity extractor system message. And then we have a function to initiate entity extraction. Since this will be run in a separate thread, we are having an infinite loop because this will uh, continually pull from the queue and process that information and save it to JSON files. And we are using the GPT entity extractor here with the chat method. And we are just giving the search term and the search results so it can extract the entities as, as seen here. Then we initialize our queue. And with our threading that thread, we run the extract entities function, which is going to run an infinite loop and continually withdraw from the queue. As we have seen in our diagram, this thread will be pulling from the queue and the entity extractor function will continually process it when there is an item in the queue. And now we ask the user if they want to save the search results or not. This is if you wanted to save the results to files. And now we enter our main loop and start taking user input. Before I continue, I'd like to talk about AutoStreamer very quickly. You can visit it at autostreamer.live and it's, uh, this application allows you to auto-create content, record or live stream that content while it's being generated. And at the end, you'll have an entirely deployable course website. At the website of AutoStreamer, you can watch the live stream I did displaying what it can do. Also, there's a sample website you can visit which the auto streamer has built. Links to these will be in the description. Another app which you might find useful that I built is codehive.app. Here you can find 900 plus GPT powered chat applications for free. Just copy them to your IDE and get some new ideas. If you like these apps, you can download them all from my Patreon for $100. During the main loop, we take in user input, check if it is saved or not, then we toggle whether we're going to save the files, and we check if the user input is combined. If it is combined, we combine the, the JSON entities into a single file, and then we ask user if, you want, if they want to use to combine the entities using GPT. If it is so, then we initialize a new GPT called Combiner GPT, with JSON mode set to true, stream set to true, and its name is going to be Combiner GPT. And we add a message as an instruction. And now we use the combiner gpt.chat and give it the entire entities. And when we receive the final JSON, we save it to a file. Other than that, we continue with the user input. We use the add message method of GPT to add the user input. And then we use the GPT switchboard to send that user input and get the JSON response, whether if we decide if we need search or not, or which search engine to use. When we receive the search needed, we check if perplexity has returned true. If so, we print that we are going to use perplexity. And then we use the GPT's chat function method to actually uh, ask it to return a proper search term. Then we get that search term. We print it and then we perform perplexity search using the perplexity search method. And then we add that to our main GPT's history. If save search was on, we put it into queue and we initialize the save search results so we can save it to file. 
otherwise, if the search, uh, if the switchboard decided to use that exa, then we do the same thing, get a search term, and I perform exa search. This is going to return the contents of the URLs. We join the contents plus the URLs, the result.txt and result.url from the search results. We combine the URLs, we print the URLs, and then if save turned on, we send it to get the JSON files extracted and save the text file. And then we ask GPT to answer our question based on Excel search. Now here we are doing some history manipulation because this uh, OpenAI unified class has, comes with a history. Because Excel can return really long documents, we probably don't want to keep it in the history, so that's why we are actually dropping them, but we are keeping the answer, the search query and the answer. The main GPTs, Maxis three words, is set to 2,000, so it should start dropping earlier messages when there is more than 2,000 words. And Max words per message is a soft instruction to GPT to return responses that are uh, 100 words or less. This is a better approach, which I've implemented in OpenAI Unified by appending to the user messages a soft instruction rather than using mixed tokens, because especially if you're using JSON format, that will lead to uh, your responses being cut off. And especially if you're using JSON mode, uh, result in some errors. I hope you enjoyed this project. Let's run it again and uh, play around with it. You can find the code files for this at my Patreon. I also forgot to mention that you can, how easily, how much easily you can perform search. So all you have to do is import the GPT calls from OpenAI Unified and perform search by using gpt.xsearch. You can specify the number of results to return. The research agent is set to three results by default, but you can change it by changing the number of results where we are performing the GPT.exe search right here. Just be mindful that a lot of URLs will result in a lot of tokens. And when you call the exe search, we'll get the URLs and the text of those URLs, and you can print them using this format or you print or within a loop. And perplexity search is even easier. We initialize the GPT calls and just call perplexity search with whatever your search term. And since perplexity just returns the result, you can print it. As you can see, when we run the research agent, our first original GPT switchboard and entity extractor are initialized. These are the instances of the unified open AI, as we've seen in the diagram here. And we ask user if, you, if, you, if the user wants to save the input. And we're going to say yes. Then we can continually say, uh, we can, if we say save again, then we'll toggle the save, saving of the search results. We do want to make sure that it's set to true. We can then start querying it. Let's ask NVIDIA 2024 Outlook. It'll again default the perplexity. It is instructed to use EXA only when you ask for it. So we are going to get an answer and our uh, search term, search term is generated. And here is the result that is being saved. We can ask it to use a different search term. Again, it's going to default to perplexity and generate a new search term to get varied results. And we're going to get a new answer. You can get really creative. And in this case, we are asking search for this philosophically and the search term that is generated in the year 2024 ethical implications of AI growth is the search term now. And we are getting an answer for it as well. At any point in time, you can say use EXA. You can specify use EXA with the first search, for example. Now it's going to use EXA and it's going to use the first search term, NVIDIA 2024 Financial Outlook. And these are the URLs it's considering. Remember, it's using uh, three results from EXA, but you can change it. And we get an answer and we have all the files written along with our entities extracted from each file. We are still waiting on the fourth file to be completed, the entity extraction for it. And now we have that. Now we can, let's, let's imagine that we are done. We can actually ask to combine it. And these are the combined JSON entities. Now it's asking us to use GPT to combine the entities. We say yes. And it's going to initialize the combiner GPT. And it's going to generate a combined GPT file, uh, JSON file. Please let me know how you like this project. If you like to talk about uh, large language models and AI applications, uh, join our Discord. And if you're a patron, thank you for your support. Like I said, all the files for this will be available at Patreon. I do want to say that there's nothing special about OpenAI Unified. You can build a, a class like this yourself. It just includes all the methods to make calls and has some helper methods to deal with the message history and stuff like that to simplify the building process. Our combined entities are written in a nice fashion. There we go. You can do anything you like with this. You can copy this, paste it into GPT and have a conversation with it or save it to a database. Also, I built this free app called FastPython. It's deployed at Railway. Actually, it's a really fun app. All you have to do is just click and learn new Python topics really quickly. If you find yourself that when you find that you have some free time, just uh, give this a try. It's really a lot of fun. I'll put the link in the description.
Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.